Hey everybody, welcome back. And we're going to do chapter 3 of Eloquent JavaScript. Uh, we've got our replet in case we want to run any code outside of the sandbox that the Eloquent JavaScript interface provides. And we've also got a gist here that we're going to build the vocabulary list for this chapter. Uh, it'll also be linked in the comments of this video, or not comments, description. So without uh, you know further, what's the word, ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, people think that computer science is the art of geniuses, but the actual reality is the opposite. Just many people doing things that build on each other, like a wall of many stones. Ooh, cool. So functions are the bread and butter of JavaScript programming. The concept of wrapping a piece of programming in a value has many uses. It gives us a way to structure larger programs, to reduce repetition, to associate names with subprograms, and to isolate these subprograms from each other. The most obvious application of functions is defining new vocabulary. Creating new words in prose is usually bad style, but in programming it is indispensable. Typical adult English speakers have some 20,000 words in their vocabulary. Few programming languages come with 20,000 commands built in. And the vocabulary that is available tends to be more precisely defined and thus less flexible than in human language. Therefore, we usually have to introduce new concepts to avoid repeating ourselves too much. Defining a function. A function definition is a regular binding where the value of the binding is a function. For example, this code defines square to, to refer to a function that produces the square of a given number. So we're using the const keyword to create a binding on square. We're assigning that binding to have a value of this function. It's going to take in a parameter x and return x times x. So I probably just said, again, what the line beneath the code is going to say, but that's you know par for the course at this point. So if we click on that, we're going to notice that we can hit command or control uh, enter, and it'll run the code for us and it'll output that. So if we want the square of 12, if we want the square of 2, we're going to get 4. Square of 21, for anybody who wants to know, is 441. Excellent. So a function is created with an expression that starts with a keyword function. Functions have a set of parameters and a body which contains, okay, so functions have a set of parameters, in this case only x, uh, and a body which contains the statements that are to be executed when the function is called. The function body of a function created this way must always be wrapped in braces, even when it consists of only a single statement. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that that entire thing might be useful just as a definition of function. So I'm going to go ahead into our uh, vocab list. I'm going to say function. And I don't remember if I'm using a colon or what, but we can mess with that later. Uh, so a function is created with an expression. That'll work. So that's the first addition to our vocab list. And cool. A function can have multiple parameters or no parameters at all. And again, parameter is this guy right here, whatever we put in this value. Um, where do we go? A function can have multiple parameters or no parameters at all. In the following example, make noise does not list any parameter names, whereas power lists two. So a couple functions here, make noise, no parameters. It's just going to constant a log pling. Um, I got a lot of constant logs going on. One of the things you can do is if there's ever a situation like this where there's more than one function occurring, uh, you see how there's two lines here? We discussed earlier how this has to do with something called comments, basically code that is not going to be run. If you highlight an entire section and then hit either control or command, uh, I, think it's, I think it's forward slash, yeah, forward slash, uh, that should comment out unless, oh boy. Okay, so forget everything that I just said. You cannot do that in this specific interface. Um, Maybe it's control. I'm getting a bunch of, all right. So swing and a miss on that. What we can do is we can do the multi-line multi, -com, multi comment thing where we put a forward slash and an asterisk and then another asterisk and a forward slash, basically saying I have a multi-line comment which is now the entire second function. And this is in the event that you want to run one function and leave the other function unchanged. Uh, we're going to have a problem here, of course, because this uh, is calling a function that doesn't exist. So we'll comment that out. Hit command and enter, so we get pling. And I'm going to go ahead and make this not a comment again. Make this not a comment. Remove that. You can see it now it's highlighted again, which basically indicates that it's no longer a comment. Command enter, pling, 1042, or 1024. So we've got a power function and make noise, and we're calling both of them. And we're having a good time. So some functions produce a value, such as power and square. And as you can see, when we console.log, the function call, we actually get a value uh, in the place of that expression. Uh, same thing happened when we did square, but you'll notice that there isn't anything like that on line 5. And the reason is, is that line 5 
is calling a function that already console.log something. So in order for us to see it in the console, we don't really need to do anything. Oh boy, jumped out in the middle of a sentence, that was bad. Okay, so some functions produce a value, such as power and square, and some don't, such as make noise, uh, whose only result is a side effect. Okay. A return statement determines the value the function returns. That sounds like another vocab word. So we'll say return statement. Return statement determines the value the function returns. Excellent. When control comes across such a statement, it immediately jumps out of the current function and gives the returned value to the code that called the function. A return keyword without an expression after it will cause the function to return undefined. Uh, I'd say that that could probably jump into our definition as well. Unless some, there we go. Yeah, it really does not want me to highlight this. All right, we'll also put this kind of in parentheses. Uh, those are going to come in handy. Uh, return statements can be good ways to exit functions uh, when you don't want them to keep going. Um, also, anything after a return statement in a function is never going to get processed. So, a bunch of things to keep in mind, but the biggest thing to keep in mind, of course, is that reading information and being able to apply it in a useful context are two separate entities, but they're both useful. So, reading this is not necessarily going to make you a wizard programmer, but if you are programming and having some difficulty, reading something like this and going through the examples can help you sort of bridge the gap. Or explain an error that you've been getting that you're not familiar with. Uh, so return will cause the function to stop to return undefined. Functions that don't have a return statement at all, such as make noise, similarly return undefined. So, well, there you go. Parameters to a function behave like regular bindings, but their initial values are given by the caller of the function, not the code in the function itself. This is a huge... Um, this is a huge point. A lot of people get very confused with the idea that defining a function is different than calling it. So we'll go ahead and add this to our uh, definitions list. We'll say parameters to a function, and that'll be there. Um, I'm gonna have to check at some point to see if I've changed the way that I'm formatting this, but if I did, well, welcome to the world of inconsistent documentation. So I believe that's it for this section. So we had the intro and we did defining a function. So that's pretty much it for now. In the next lesson, we're gonna do bindings and scopes. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.